Hello, today we'll be going through practice questions 31 to 40 for the Certified Ethical Hacker V13 exam. Let's begin. Joel, a professional hacker, targeted a company and identified the types of websites frequently visited by its employees. Using this information, he searched for possible loopholes in these websites and injected a malicious script that can redirect users from the web page and download malware onto a victim's machine. Joel waits for the victim to access the infected web application so as to compromise the victim's machine. Which of the following techniques is used by Joel in the above scenario? The correct answer is A. Watering hole attack In a watering hole attack, the attacker targets websites that are frequently visited by employees of a specific organization. The attacker compromises one or more of these sites by injecting malicious code, then wait for victims to visit the site and become infected, exactly what Joel did. Why the other options are incorrect? B. DNS rebinding attack. This tricks a browser into violating the same origin policy, allowing it to communicate with internal systems, not about infecting commonly visited websites. C. MarioNet attack. A browser-based botnet attack where malware persists through web browsers, not relevant to compromising third-party websites visited by targets. D. Clickjacking attack. This tricks users into clicking hidden elements like buttons and is unrelated to infecting trusted websites and waiting for users to visit them. Therefore, the correct answer is A. Security administrator John Smith has noticed abnormal amounts of traffic coming from local computers at night. Upon reviewing, he finds that user data have been exfiltrated by an attacker. AV tools are unable to find any malicious software, and the IDS IPS has not reported on any non-whitelisted programs. What type of malware did the attacker use to bypass the company's application whitelisting? The correct answer is A. Fileless Malware Fileless malware runs entirely in memory and does not write files to disks, making it invisible to traditional antivirus and often able to bypass application whitelisting and evade IDS IPS detection. This matches the scenario where no malware was found, but data was exfiltrated. Why the other options are incorrect? B. Zero-day malware. This exploits unknown vulnerabilities. While dangerous, it doesn't explain how the malware avoided whitelisting and detection mechanisms as specifically as fileless malware does. C. Phishing malware. This refers to malware delivered via phishing, but not a type of malware designed to evade whitelisting or avoid leaving traces. D. Logic bomb malware. This triggers under specific conditions. It doesn't match the stealthy, memory resident behavior described in this case. Therefore, the correct answer is A. Dorian is sending a digitally signed email to Polly. With which key is Dorian signing this message and how is Polly validating it? The correct answer is C. Dorian is signing the message with his private key and Polly will verify that the message came from Dorian by using Dorian's public key. In digital signatures, the sender, Dorian, signs the message using his private key, which proves authenticity and integrity. The recipient, Polly, uses Dorian's public key to verify that the message was indeed signed by Dorian and hasn't been altered. Why the other options are incorrect? A. You cannot sign with a public key. Only the private key can generate a valid digital signature. B. Dorian would never have access to Polly's private key, and it makes no sense for verifying Dorian's identity. D. Polly's public key is used for encrypting messages to her not for signing or verifying someone else's identity. Therefore, the correct answer is C. Joe turns on his home computer to access personal online banking. When he enters the URL www.bank.com, the website is displayed, but it prompts him to re-enter his credentials as if he has never visited the site before. When he examines the website URL closer, he finds that the site is not secure and the web address appears different. What type of attack is he experiencing? The correct answer is D. DNS hijacking. 
Joe is experiencing DNS hijacking, where a malicious actor has altered the DNS records to redirect Joe's browser from the legitimate www.bank.com to a fake website that looks identical. The fact that the site asks him to re-enter credentials and the URL appears subtly different are strong indicators of DNS hijacking. This is commonly used in phishing to steal sensitive information. Why the other options are incorrect? A. DHCP spoofing. This involves an attacker providing false IP configuration details to a victim's machine, but it wouldn't directly alter the domain resolution of www.bank.com or result in a fake banking site being shown. B. DOS attack. A denial-of-service attack aims to make services unavailable, not redirect users or trick them into giving up credentials. C. ARP cache poisoning. This is used to redirect local traffic within a network, typically for man-in-the-middle attacks, but it wouldn't directly change how domain names resolve unless paired with other techniques. The scenario described is more clearly linked to DNS manipulation. Therefore, the correct answer is D. Boney, a professional hacker, targets an organization for financial benefits. He performs an attack by sending his session ID using a MITM attack technique. Boney first obtains a valid session ID by logging into a service and later feeds the same session ID to the target employee. The session ID links the target employee to Boney's account page without disclosing any information to the victim. When the target employee clicks on the link, all the sensitive payment details entered into a form are linked to Boney's account. What is the attack performed by Boney in the above scenario? The correct answer is D. Session fixation attack. In a session fixation attack, the attacker sets a session ID and tricks the victim into using it. In this scenario, Boney logs into the service, obtains a valid session ID linked to his account, and then sends that session ID to the victim. When the victim uses it and submits sensitive data, it's linked to Boney's session, giving him access without the victim realizing it. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Forbidden attack. This is not a recognized term in cybersecurity. There is no formal forbidden attack in standard literature. B. Crime attack. The crime attack targets SSL TLS compression to extract secret data like session cookies, not relevant to the session manipulation described here. C. Session donation attack. This is not an established term in cybersecurity. The term used when a session ID is deliberately shared is session fixation, not donation. Therefore, the correct answer is D. Kevin, a professional hacker, wants to penetrate Cybertech Inc.'s network. He employed a technique using which he encoded packets with Unicode characters. The company's IDS cannot recognize the packets, but the target web server can decode them. What is the technique used by Kevin to evade the IDS system? The correct answer is C. Obfuscating. Kevin is using obfuscation techniques to evade detection. By encoding packets with Unicode characters, he changes the appearance of the payload so that the IDS cannot recognize it as malicious, while the web server still decodes and processes it correctly. This is a classic form of obfuscation, used to bypass security monitoring systems. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Session splicing. This involves splitting malicious payloads into multiple packets to evade IDS, but it doesn't involve Unicode or encoding. B. Urgency flag. This refers to setting the urge flag in TCP headers to prioritize packets. It's not related to encoding or evasion using Unicode. D. Desynchronization. This occurs when an attacker tries to confuse the IDS and the target system into interpreting the session differently usually involving TCP stream manipulation, not Unicode encoding. Therefore, the correct answer is C. Which of the following commands checks for valid users on an SMTP server? The correct answer is C. VRFY. The VRFY command is used in SMTP to verify whether a specific user exists on the mail server. When issued, it asks the server to confirm if the given email address or username is valid. 
Why the other options are incorrect? A. RCPT. RCPT T0 is used during the SMTP conversation to specify the recipient of the email, not to verify if the user exists without sending a message. B. CHK. CHK is not a valid SMTP command. D. EXPN. EXPN is used to expand a mailing list to show all recipient addresses, not to check individual users. Therefore, the correct answer is C. Bella, a security professional working at an IT firm, finds that a security breach has occurred while transferring important files. Sensitive data, employee usernames, and passwords are shared in plain text paving the way for hackers to perform successful session hijacking. To address this situation, Bella implemented a protocol that sends data using encryption and digital certificates. Which of the following protocols is used by Bella? The correct answer is A. FTPS Bella used FTPS, which is FTP enhanced with SSL TLS encryption. It secures the transfer of sensitive data, such as usernames and passwords, by encrypting them and using digital certificates to ensure authenticity and confidentiality during file transfers. Why the other options are incorrect? B. FTP. Regular FTP transmits data in plain text and does not provide encryption or certificate-based security. This is what caused the breach in the first place. C. HTTPS. HTTPS secures web traffic, not file transfers. While it uses encryption and digital certificates, it's not the protocol Bella would implement to secure file transfers specifically. D. IP IP is a network layer protocol used for routing packets. It does not provide encryption or security by itself. Therefore, the correct answer is A. John wants to send Mary an email that includes sensitive information, and he does not trust the network that he is connected to. Mary gives him the idea of using PGP. What should John do to communicate correctly using this type of encryption? The correct answer is D. Use Mary's public key to encrypt the message. With PGP, if John wants to send an encrypted message to Mary, he should encrypt it using Mary's public key. Only Mary's private key can then decrypt it, ensuring that only she can read the message. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Use his own private key to encrypt the message. This would not protect the message from eavesdropping. It would instead be used for signing, not encryption. B. Use his own public key to encrypt the message. Anyone has access to his public key, so the message would not be confidential. C. Use Mary's private key to encrypt the message. Mary's private key is meant to be kept secret. John should never have access to it, and is never used for encryption by others. Therefore, the correct answer is D. In the CVSS version 3.1 severity ratings, what range does medium vulnerability fall in? The correct answer is D. 4.0 to 6.9. In CVSS version 3.1, vulnerabilities are rated as medium when their base score falls between 4.0 and 6.9 inclusive. This range indicates a moderate level of severity that should still be addressed but is not as critical as high or critical ratings. Why the other options are incorrect? A. 4 to 6. This range excludes scores between 6.1 and 6.9, which are still considered medium severity. B. 3.9 to 6.9. Scores below 4.0 fall into the low category, so 3.9 is not part of medium. C. 3.0 to 6.9. This range includes scores well below 4.0, which are categorized as low, not medium. Therefore, the correct answer is D. We have come to the end of today's video. If you liked the video, please make sure to like and subscribe. Goodbye.